When it comes to mutually exclusive investments, it turns out that IRR suffers from the scale problem. Specifically, if you have two investments, A and B, and you have to pick one, and if we know that A has an IRR of 10%, whereas B has an IRR of 100%, IRR might say, look, B has the higher IRR, so pick B, but that can be misleading because if 100% is the rate of return we're expecting to make on a $1 investment, whereas 10% is what we're expecting to make on a $1 million investment, then it is clear that in dollar terms, this investment of $1 million is likely going to add more value to our firm than this $1 investment. Unfortunately, when we just look at the IRRs, we don't get to see the scale of the project, which is why we can end up making the wrong decision. And so in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how you can remedy this problem by calculating what is known as the incremental IRR. And we'll see how by calculating incremental IRR, we can draw consistency between what the IRR tells us to do and what the net present value rule tells us to do as well. So consider a firm that is deciding between two projects, A and B. A is a small scale project. It requires an upfront investment of $5,000. will yield $2,500 for the next three years. And then finally $5,000 at the end of year four. Project B is a large scale project, requires a bigger upfront investment and then generates higher cash inflows as well. What I've done over here is calculated the IRR and the NPV of these two projects. NPV is calculated using a discount rate of 20%. And one thing that we see over here is that project A has a higher IRR, but a lower NPV at a discount rate of 20%. And so, if you were to decide between A and B, IRR would tell you, look, pick A because it has the higher IRR, but NPV would tell you to pick project B because it has the higher NPV. And so herein lies the problem. There is an inconsistency between what NPV is telling you to do and what IRR is telling you to do. IRR is telling you to invest in A, NPV is telling you to invest in B, and we know that in this case, NPV is more reliable because even though B has a smaller IRR, it has a larger scale, which means that it is adding more value in dollar terms. Now, the question is, is there something we can do to bring back the consistency that we have seen for independent projects uh, between IRR and NPV, and it turns out that we can using something called the incremental internal rate of return. So here's how you can think about it. Let's suppose that you have decided that you are going to invest in the small scale project, which is spend $5,000 in year zero. But then somebody comes to you and says, look, how much is the extra amount that you would need to spend as you move from project A to project B? Now, just by looking at these numbers, you can deduce that the extra investment required is going to be $15,000. I mean, if you're going to spend $20,000 on the large scale and $5,000 on the small scale, then the extra that you would spend would be $15,000. And so the way that you can calculate this is that you can say equal to, you take how much you're going to be spending on the large scale minus how much you're actually spending on the small scale or project A. And so that's $15,000. And so notice that uh, how I'm labeling this, this is how much is my incremental cash flow as I'm moving from project A to B. And the way I'm calculating this number is by first taking the value in project B and subtracting what I have in A. So again, I did negative 20,000, which was the value in B and subtracted what I had in A, and so that's how I got the negative 15,000. So this is the extra amount that I will spend as I go from A to B. Now I can copy and then paste this formula on the next few cells to get an idea as to how much is the extra inflow that I'm going to get as a result of making this move. So I'm going to get $6,500 extra in years one, two, and three, and $13,000 at the end of year four. So now the question is, is it worthwhile making this move? Is it worthwhile spending an extra $15,000 to get these extra cash inflows?
Now, if you're looking at NPV, you might say, well, that's a rhetorical question. Of course it makes sense, right? So one way in which you can answer this question is by calculating what we can refer to as the incremental incremental NPV, which is the extra net present value that we would get as we move from A to B. You can calculate it two ways. One is to simply say, look, I know that the NPV that I'm getting from B is 7,638. I know that the NPV that I'm getting from A is 2,677. And so I know already that as I'll make this move, the extra value, the extra NPV I will get is going to be the difference between this minus this and because this is a positive number of course i should make this move now the other way in which you could have done this is using the formula where you actually calculate the net present value of these incremental cash flows right so these are the extra cash flows that you're going to get as you make a move from a to b and you say okay what is the what is the net present value of these cash flows well 20 percent is your rate you discount all of these inflows and then you add the initial investment and no surprise the incremental NPV that you're getting is basically exactly the difference between this number and this number. So my point is that one way in which you could have reflected on whether this is a worthwhile move is by calculating the incremental NPV. It turns out the idea of incremental IRR is very similar similar so notice that I'm writing IIRR which is the incremental IRR and so the way we go about it is we say look calculate equal to IRR and calculate the IRR of these incremental cash flows these incremental cash flows which is coming out to 34.76 percent so in other words if you will move from A to B the extra rate of return that you will get or the rate of return that you will get on this move is going to be 34.76%. So in other words, if you spend this extra $15,000 moving from A to B, the IRR on that investment is 34.76. Is it good? Well, the next best thing that you can do is only 20%. So yeah, of course it's good. And so because the incremental because the incremental internal rate of return is more than the discount rate, you should make this move from A to B. And so this is how you can evaluate this investment based on incremental IRR as well. So if you had decided that you are going to stick with small scale, now after doing this analysis, you can see that moving from A to B makes sense because the IIRR is more than 20%. And so this analysis basically tells you, don't stick with A, move to B, which is precisely what our initial analysis was telling us in the first place. Look, we should invest in B because Project B has the higher NPV, whether you look at it from the incremental NPV standpoint or just as the difference between these two numbers, it's the exact same logic. Now you might say, look, in this case, I was moving from A to B. What if I had decided to invest in the large scale project and then I were thinking about moving from that to the small scale? So what if I were moving from B to A? How would that work? Well, the logic is fairly similar, but you have to be careful interpreting your numbers. So let's go through the, with this exercise. Let's suppose that you had decided to spend $20,000 on the large scale project. And now you're like, what if I move from the large to the small? Well, in this case, initially I'll save money, right? Instead of spending $20,000, I'll spend only $5,000. And so the way I can calculate this is equal to and I take the number in A and subtract the number that I have in B. I do the opposite of what I did before. So here I'll save $15,000 up front. So this is the incremental cash flow as I'm moving from B to A. And the way I calculate this is by doing A minus B. Now, if I copy and this paste this formula over here, I basically get the negative of the numbers that I got previously. And now if I ask you, what is the IRR of these cash flows? Well, actually, it's going to be identical. It's going to be 34.76%. Now, this is sometimes a source of confusion for students because when we were moving from A to B and we said that the IRR of that move is 
we argued that because 34.76% is more than 20%, we should move from A to B. But then if we are calculating the IRR of moving from B to A, we are again getting 34.76. And so by the same logic, you might conclude that because 34.76 is more than 20, we should move from B to A. But that seems illogical because the result seems to depend on where you're starting from. If you're starting to move from A to B, IRR is telling you, yes, move from A to B. But then if you're at B, it's telling you to move to A. That seems illogical. Well, be careful because here the cash flows are not the type of cash flows that we see regularly. Specifically, these are unconventional cash flows where you are getting a positive number followed by negatives. In a previous video, I've talked to you about how this is another drawback of IRR that when you have cash flows of this type, this is more like a financing activity where you're getting some inflow as if you're borrowing money up front and then you are making payments. So here the IRR is not as much as the rate of return you're making on your investment, but it's more like a borrowing rate. And so the lower it is, the better. And so in this case, you should only make the move from B to A if the answer that you get here is less than 20%, not more. And because the answer is coming out to be greater than 20%, the conclusion that you will arrive at here is that if you are at B, stay at B. Don't move from B to A because it's a value losing prospect which is basically what NPV is telling you as well. So my point is that, look, it doesn't matter whether you're moving from A to B or B to A, as long as you're able to interpret your incremental IRR accordingly, you will arrive at the same conclusion that NPV is arriving at. And so this is how you can calculate incremental IRR and draw consistency between IRR and NPV.